What's up guys, Arden here with Yellow House Aerial, and today we're going through the lens flare of DJI's DL lenses. Let's get started. We made sure to test each lens across the center of the frame as well as the top of the frame, and we also made sure to test with LED as well as the sun because different light temperatures and different sizes of points of light might yield different results in the lens flare. Before we get started, I'll tell you that these DL lenses being purpose-built are definitely better than the X5S lenses, which were mostly built for stills, but you can probably get better glass for the same price point on different cameras with different mounts. So while the flares are inconsistent across the set of lenses, they won't make your footage worse, but they definitely won't make it better. Now to the flares. Starting off indoors, the 16mm shows a lot of elements. Over to the 24mm is a little bit simpler and somewhat more pleasing. It also started showing something I can only find informally described as onion skin. We'll come back to that in a minute. We're also starting to see part of a purple four-part artifact here. The fact that it's made up of four parts and not entirely circular tells me that there's some element of the sensor playing into how it shows up. The 35mm has a big green and yellow dot but overall nice characteristics, still showing some of that onion skin here. The 50mm's flare is very simple and subdued, and you really have to try to see it. The 50mm is definitely the worst for that onion skin right here. Heading outdoors, the flares look similar but are less distracting. The 16mm retains its high number of flares. We actually start to see that same four-part spike we saw on the indoor test, just not as prominently. On the 24mm, no complaints, a nice purple hue there, and we're starting to see what's been referred to as a black hole sun here, something black magic cameras dealt with before, we'll get to that later as well. Now over to the 35mm, the dots from the indoor test are much less visible, this lens has a nice big flare and it's really subdued, I'd say it's the cleanest of the set. The 50mm has a really soft flare, almost showing these diffraction type god rays more than the actual lens flares. I also shot two X5S lenses just to show the difference. The stock 15mm has big halo-y flares with a bluish green tint, and the flares become moon or T-shaped the higher the light source goes in the frame. The second lens, the Olympus 25mm M Zuko, has a more colorful flare and is a little less photo looking, though the flares are quite prominent in the frame. Okay, that's it for flares, I know it was a lot. Now let's talk about the two issues that I found while testing these lenses. The onion skin shows up on the 24, 35, and the 50mm, and it's brutal on the 50mm. As you can see on this test here, this was shot in 6K RAW and it shows it really well. Outdoors, the onion skin is very subtle, but not gone altogether. You can see it if we zoom into the 50mm shot right here. The onion skin is visible on the monitor feed, on the H.264 proxy, and in the ProRes or RAW footage, so there's no way that it's anything but the sensor or the lens. I feel like it's some sort of interference pattern with light bouncing around inside the lens, that's why you get that kind of wave look, but I've asked a bunch of cinematographers and camera people that I know and nobody really has any idea what's going on. If you know, definitely let us know down in the comments. I wouldn't expect this issue to plague you unless you're dancing the camera through some car headlights, but that's a really specific scenario. Unfortunately, using these lenses like you might use a top-notch cinema lens really shows you why they're at a lower price point. Now over to the black hole sun. Once I took the X7 outdoors, I started to see something that's reminiscent of the black hole sun that showed up in some Blackmagic cameras. Now it's not the Blackmagic cameras, it's not the X7 lenses, it's really just a characteristic of CMOS sensors. When there's enough light on the sensor, the signal just gets all muddled and the image processor interprets it as black. So I shot this footage wide open and without any ND filters. In a real world scenario, you'll probably have an ND on or you'll probably stop down to f4 or something tighter. You won't have this much light hitting the sensor. And even if it does show up in one of your clips, maybe you're shooting a super wide and you're wide open and you forgot the NDs at home, it's a pretty easy fix in post so long as you're not panning across the sun, moving super fast or anything like that. Bottom line, black hole sun is a thing, but in regular usage, you shouldn't really face this problem. So in summary, we can't really chalk up these DL lenses to something like a professional set of cine lenses, but they do maintain that true sharpness and the small lightweight form factor that lets us get clean aerials on a small integrated package like the Zenmuse X7. They're pricey considering the corners they cut, but they are definitely the best option available right now for integrated aerial cinematography. So that's it for today. Don't forget to drop us a comment if you know anything about that onion skin problem. If you found this useful, give us a like. Consider subscribing to see what else we're into. My name is Arden for Yellow House Aerial, and I will see you in the next video.